Good morning, good morning. Today is October 29th, 2020. Man, so, um, yeah, man, I want to talk a little something different today. Um, obviously, this is a day trading journey of mine, um, but also I want to put in perspective that, um, to put in the perspective that the stock market is a vast variety of different ways to make money. So um, as I've stated in my last video, um, mentally and emotionally, I've been struggling a little bit um, as far as trying to execute my trades in such a volatile uh, strategy, which is trading low floats and small cap stocks. Um, so I started reviewing my data and realized that I was more... Um, profitable in the long run when I traded higher priced market caps. Um, still trying to trade the low floats, um, which can still be volatile, but the higher the market cap got, the better off I was in consistency in the long run compared to when I tried to trade them low floats um, in them small caps under 50 million or less uh, market cap. Um, so, you know, that got me thinking and reviewing my data. And then, um, so, you know, I started thinking, okay, if, if me personally, mentally and emotionally, um, I'm having struggles trying to capture the movements in a, such a volatile market on the intraday, which is one day, cause I'm a day trader, right? Um, you know, let me, let me step back and start looking up, um, other, other opportunities. Um, so what's funny is, um, the stock I want to talk about today is a uh, neo nio um so this first popped up on my watch list a few months ago when it was running in the teens um as you can see now it's damn near 30 dollars a share um and that's what made it pop up on my radar again um this stock was first brought to me um um by someone i know that texted me and asked me about it um a few months back and said hey what do you think of this stock um, and from a, a day trader's perspective and from my perspective of just trading technicals and not really looking at fundamentals, um, when I looked at the chart, I said, man, this is overextended. It's going to drop. And sure enough, it did because um, during that time, it was about $16 a share. And the very next day, it was down to $13 a share. Um, but again, it popped up on my radar a few days ago. Um, and so the chart pattern was beautiful and it made me want to research this stock and said, okay, well... You know, if a few months ago it was at 16 and now it's doubled its price, maybe I should take a, a good look into this, okay? So, doing the research, um, this is what I found out. Um, so, as you see right here, total revenue. Um, and these are in billions, by the way, to let you know. Um, so, in 2018, it had a total revenue of, of $4.95 billion. Um, then 2019, $7.82 billion. Um, so, that... I mean, that's almost double. That's probably a 60 to 70% growth right there. And then this is uh, the, the trailing 12-month period. And so, so far, whatever they have put into Google Finance, um, the year obviously isn't ended yet, but it's already reached roughly about the same as 19, 2019, which is $7.56 billion. Um, and then you could see you could see the revenue right here. See $4.95 billion. 7.82 billion so a nice jump from 2018 to 2019 and once we get the full numbers of 2020 um so the revenue keeps building um but then when you look at the earnings um minus 3.5 billion minus 7.5 billion minus 23 minus 11. so but just doing the homework on here um all this is just basically uh pouring money back into it so um neo is an is an electric vehicle company, uh, a very innovative company out of based out of China. Um, so you have to do the research on on the um, on the people involved. So um, William Ben, he is basically uh, the founder of this company. Um, he is a billionaire businessman in China, and he specializes in the automotive industry. I mean, that's where he got his first billions at creating websites to sell used cars, and he just kept uh, expanding from there. Um, uh, he has multiple uh, degrees. Um, very, very intelligent man. Um, also, there's a lot of big named billionaires, the China businessmen that also bought into this company. Um, looking into it. So this is going to be some competition for Tesla in the future going forward. Um, uh, from my perspective and what I found, 
Um, also, uh, so everybody obviously knows fucking who Tesla is. Well, Tesla um, was created by Elon Musk. Elon Musk is the number one shareholder of Tesla. Um, the second biggest shareholder in Tesla is an investment group called Billy Gifford. Um, they're based out of Ireland. Um, and Billy Gifford uh, just purchased an 11% stake in, in NEO, which is roughly about a, a billion dollar stake um, as of right now. Um, so, you know, a company like that, they're long-term investors. So, you know, you have to think about that perspective if, if the... If the second largest shareholder in Tesla is now buying into this company as well, an 11% stake hold in this company, um, I mean, that's that's not small beans and potatoes, you know what I mean? That's uh, that's about a billion dollars plus right now. Um, and 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 if you compare them to Tesla and, and what Tesla has done from the day they IPO'd, because um, they IPO'd in 2010, um, and they ran from, you know, the teens... You know, I believe they IPO'd at $17 a share, which is roughly about what Neo IPO'd at. And they got as high as $2,300 a share in 10 years. So just put that in perspective, $2,300 a share in 10 years from $17. Um, you know, so if you do the math, you know, if you bought one share for $17, your $17 would be $2,300. Um, and if you do the math on it, say you bought, um, you know, at seventeen dollars, you bought a hundred shares, so you spent seventeen hundred dollars. A hundred times twenty-three hundred, your seventeen hundred dollars would be almost a quarter million dollars. Um, and so, I've been really looking into investing in um, this disrupt, this this disruptive nature of um, of what's going on in the world right now. So, I really compare this to. Um, a hundred years ago when Ford first came out with the automobile and obviously Ford was the leader in that area, just like Tesla's the leader in this specific area right now. And then the expansion of everybody that followed Ford uh, and, and now you could see car dealerships all over the place. There's not just Ford. There's plenty of uh, market share out there. Um, the market is worldwide. Um, so even if you have a small percentage of the market, a small 5% of the market, that's still major growth opportunity for you. Um, and then not only that, but NEO is also backed by the Chinese government because the Chinese government is trying to um, trying to get rid of pollution um, in their country. Um, so they're really trying to push where the majority of the cars in the future in 10 years from now are going to be electric car uh, are going to be electric cars. And for them to have a contract with NEO, um, that is big, big uh, for uh, the future ahead of NEO. Um, not only that, um, um, as you can see here, we're having constant growth in revenue. Um, and, and this is no small beans. Um, and not only that, um, they're also growing. So if you go through their SEC filings, as you can see, Neo Inc. provides September and third quarter 2020 delivery updates. So um, from this last quarter, uh, Neo delivered 4,708 vehicles in September 2020, increased by 133% year over year. So a year ago, they have already increased 133% in delivering their electric vehicles. Um, and then Neo delivered 12,206 vehicles in the last three months, which is the quarter, because this was just one month, 4,700 vehicles in one month. So within the quarter of three months, they delivered 12,206 vehicles in three months, ended September 2020, and increased by 154% year over year. And if you look over here, Neo has delivered 26,375 vehicles in 2020 in total, increasing by 113% year over year now that is a total for 2020 as of right now we still have three more months of 2020 to go well really two more months at this point um and and their vehicles are pretty badass guys you should go um anybody watching this go look up their video or yeah look up their videos on youtube of their actual vehicles they're fucking dope um their suvs they do have a supercar and they've also been the first they actually right now hold the record for the fastest electric vehicle car i believe they clocked in at 175 miles an hour um and their car is pretty dope and they also are working on autonomous cars which the cars that can drive themselves and they actually have a video of that online of of their supercar driving around a track by itself um so very 
innovative innovative company um, with looking like a great future ahead of them. Um, there are 16 Wall Street analysts, and there's not a single analyst that suggests a sale on it. Um, as you can see, they have a 12-month forecast. Um, the lowest forecast of a 12-month period from right now. So right now, the, the stock's trading at $30 a share um, in 12 months. The lowest analyst predicts it <laughs> Excuse me, to be at $44.12. That's the lowest analyst, okay? Um, the medium range is about $142 a share, and at the highest range, $269 a share. So think about that. In 12 months, um, right now, I made, um, I personally bought in um, just because I've done all the homework. Um, you know, you want to research who's involved in this stock. So, you know, I did a background check on the, um, um, I did a background check on the investors. I did a background check on um, William Bin, who is the one who created this company. Um, and, and then you want to just go through their filings and see um, the growth. So obviously revenues are growing. The only thing that's a concern is the earnings. But right now in such a beginning stages of the company, I know that they're just dumping all this money into growing their company. They're dumping. There's multiple billionaire Chinese men that are involved in this company, Chinese businessmen that are dumping and they're all billionaires and they're dumping billions of dollars in the company right now. Why is that? Why would uh, China have a contract with this company um, because their country wants to change and get rid of pollution and go to electric vehicles. So they're getting backed by their own country. And right now with everything going on with, um, you know, the American in, in China trade dispute and all that bullshit, um, that's a huge opening for this company because right now Tesla is the world, you know, they are the dominant in the world in the EV market. And um, there is Teslas in China, but if China kicks Tesla out and takes over with NEO, you know, there's actually a higher demand for electric vehicles in China than there is in America right now. And and I don't see that uh, diminishing o over the time. I only see it growing over time. Um, so, you know, um, so just this alone. And, and just to give you a perspective on the 12 month, um, you know, forecast for this company, um, this is pretty much almost exactly like Tesla. I mean, when Tesla first came out, nobody predicted Tesla would go where it was. Um, there was one analyst, uh, Catherine Wood. Um, she's part of an investment group called Arc Invest. Arc Invest, look them up. They're they're involved in disruptive uh, companies, what they consider disruptive companies, meaning that we are at a pivotal point in this world and in this time period as human beings. That that technology is changing. Everything is changing. So I had watched in um, I had watched a seminar she did in South Africa. And she showed a chart of, you know, when the railroads came and, and the railway and, and the, in the industrial movement. And then, you know, when uh, automobiles came and then um, you know, when airplanes came and then, you know, then all of a sudden when computers come in the 80s. And there's nothing compared to what's going on as far as software, um, 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 uh, all the all the technological advances that are going on right now in the early 2000s. We are still in the baby stage of this. We are now becoming more mature and we are evolving as human beings to adapt all this uh, technological advancement in our lives that within the next 10, 20, 30 years down the line, that's going to be the normal. Everyone's going to be involved in it, you know, because that's going to be for me, you know, I'm 30 years old. So 30, I'll be 60 years old and it's going to be a norm for me. It's not a norm for my grandparents. You know, my grandparents don't have no fucking technology in their house. You know, and my grandma has a cell phone. That's about it. But that's because, you know, we got to get a hold of her when she ain't home. You know what I'm saying? Because we, she got at it. Um, but anyway, compared to Tesla, I mean, Tesla, Tesla, this is almost a dead on exact of Tesla from everything I'm seeing from um, revenue growth, from what I'm seeing from analyst forecasts, from what I'm seeing um, in, in every aspect of this company. Um, because Tesla pretty much had the same thing. And guess what happened to Tesla? They fucking skyrocketed. Um, this year alone, they went from in the $60 range to the $2,000 range, um, because nobody really expected it, um, um, for that kind of growth so quickly, but it's, it's taking over the world because it's what the world needs. Um, so for Neo, um, I truly believe that even these are low. I mean, maybe for a 12 month forecast, I believe, um, 
I believe in 12 months because it's already hitting $30 now and we still have two more months of this year. I believe it will probably hit the 40s at year end. Um, so for 12 months from now, um, I believe um, it'll it could possibly be in this range, um, maybe even higher. Just from everything that I'm seeing as far as growth of the company, um, the government backing the company, um, big boy investors like uh, Billy Gifford um, taking a, a nice stake in this company. Um, and then also, if we go here, the growth and chart pattern of this company, as you can see here. And I see I have a, a in this account, I bought shares in each account. Um, but in this particular account, I bought 40 shares at an average price of $27.9858. And as you can see, I'm already $2 a share up on my position um, because it's trading at $29.95. So I'm already up $2 a share on this particular position, which is, you know, roughly um, about, you know, a, a 9 to 10% gain. But you can see beautiful growth. Uh, and this is when I first noticed it in here. Um, it popped up on my chart for, and I was just looking at it as a squeeze, man. I'm a day trader. Um, that's exactly how I seen it. I seen it as a squeeze and then it, and then it dropped down here, um, to the tens and elevens. And, and that's exactly what I thought it would do. But then it wound up again here, boom. And then again here, boom, broke, held. And then now again here, boom, broke and it held. And now it's breaking out again. Um, so all I see is nothing but great things, um, you know, in all my accounts. Um, so in this account, uh, I have an average price of $27.98. Um, in another account, I have an average price of $27.69. And in another account, I dip bought it in, in one of these days right here. And I, I believe I bought uh, at an average price of $26.60. Um, so in all my accounts, um, so far, so good. And everything I see about this is going to be an investment for the long haul um, because I truly believe it could reach uh, within the next five years, if not 10 years, the level that t Tesla reached in the $2,000 range um, because of the direction that the world is going right now and the direction of us as human beings um, with the takeover that's going on. So there's a lot more um, technology stocks, um, software companies. Um, even um, even digital banking companies that I'm looking into right now as far as long-term investments. Um, so I'll be sure to update you guys on that um, um, because I'm starting to find that this is the direction because I've always knew how to read SEC filings. Um, so these are the SEC filings, what you see here. Um, I've always, you know, I, I, I know how to read these. I've studied these. Uh, I've gone through fucking eight hour uh, video lesson on this and it was probably like the boringest course I've ever had to deal with. Um, but I also like to read books. Right now I've read all the books that I have um, on business and finance and mindset and psychology and fucking personal development. Um, I've read all those books. Um, so I told myself, what can I read now? And so I just started reading SEC files. Um, and, and as you can see here, the growth of the production that they're doing increased over 100%, um, 150% this quarter from last year, and uh, over 100% already for this year in total, and the year's not even over. Um, you know, that tells me if it continues at this growth rate in five years, you know, I could look at a great return on my money. Um, so there's a lot more companies that I'm seeing like this um, with huge growth potential. Um, and, and it all comes down to digging and doing your homework and, and seeing, um, doing the research yourself. So a lot of people don't like to do the research. Um, I literally did my research before I started looking up what anybody else has to say. Um, and then when I started looking up what other, uh, other people had to say um, about this company, um, we are all pretty much have the same mindset for this company as far as a long-term investment. Um, and I also am looking into buying Tesla stock right now, too. Um, their stock is going for roughly around uh, a little over $400. I want to say about $420 right now. Um, and they still have the potential to get up in the um, because they did a five to one split. So they were trading in the $2,000 range, um, but they do the split so they could attract more investors and, and get and um, to attract more investors because when it's trading at over $2,000, you know, a normal nine to five guy who wants to invest that's a two thousand dollars for one share that's a lot of money for someone to give up but 
um, Catherine Gifford, or I'm sorry, not Catherine Gifford. I'm sorry, Kathleen Wood. Um, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, she truly believes um, that this stock um, at that time when it was trading at 2000 that it could reach 7000 So if you do that, and so that's still growing another three to four times your money. So at 400 you know, we're looking at a potential up into like the $1,500 range to $2,000 range again in the future that it could potentially make. And she was the first one um, um, to come out and, and say in the very beginning that she believed Tesla would reach these prices. And um, so far, she's been absolutely right. Um, so, you know, just, uh, you know, there's so much that goes into researching these companies. You want to dig into their SEC filings. You want to go through their balance sheets. You want to know um, you want to know if their revenue is growing. You want to know if they have earnings. You want to know if they have cash flow. Uh, cash flow is important. But a lot of time with these IPOs and these companies, that the, as they're still young, um, they usually have negative cash flow as of right now. Um, so, um, but I'm not really worried about it because of the people backing this company and their products are amazing. Go look them up. Neo cars on YouTube. They got dope shit. They make SUVs right now, but their SUVs are clean though. You feel me? I want to fucking buy one. Like the inside is butter. Like it's pure luxury. They're running for about $50,000, uh, per car right now, which is dope. And then they have this innovative solution. Um, which is what Tesla struggles with right now a little bit, which is um, the charging factor of your battery. So, you know, with Tesla, they have a chargeable stations, but to charge your battery, it could take uh, a lot of time to charge your battery, 30 to an hour. Um, you know, I, I've heard different things, but I want to say, you know, 30 minutes at the minimum um, to charge your battery. So that means anytime, say, if you're taking on a long journey trip, and, you know, your battery's running low, and you pull over on the side of the road, you got to sit on the side of the road for 30 minutes. Well, NEO, they have a solution to that, which is um, to do a battery exchange. So um, basically like a car payment, what they'll do is um, they'll lease the battery to you. You can purchase the battery if you like, but they'll lease the battery to you. And if they lease it, the car will go from fifty dollars to forty, or I'm sorry, fifty grand to forty grand per car um, without the battery, and they'll lease you the battery for one hundred and forty dollars a month. Um, so that way you could pull up to a swapping station. So that way, when your battery's running low, you just pull up to the swapping station and swap out batteries within five minutes, and you're good to go with a full charge, man. So, I mean, I think that's pretty dope. I think that's innovative. I'm also trying to think of outside the box where I was really just looking in America, U.S. companies. But, you know, we have a vast world. We got an entire world to look into, um, and, and China has always been a leader in technology and software. So if that's the way that this world is going and developing over time, then why not dip into China? There's a few other Chinese companies that I'm d digging into right now as we speak that um, that I'm willing to invest in. I just got to do a little bit more homework, but they're looking extremely promising. Um, now, on the American front, I am looking into a few marijuana stocks that are looking promising. Um, but again, that's only if um, we finally legalize it federally. And then we could go nationwide with it because there's a few brands and companies um, uh, from the medical space of marijuana and the uh, retail space of marijuana that could be potential growth opportunities as well. Just looking through their filings and looking through their revenues and their earnings and their cash flow, um, that could be really great. And I'll be sure to make a video about those as well. But I just wanted to tell you guys, um, in the while I'm sitting back collecting more data on my day trading, um, you know, I'm also, why let my money just sit when it could be compounding over time? Um, because I still need a lot more data. I realize I only have 253 examples of data right now. That's nowhere close to what I need. I need at least a couple thousand. So, you know, and that takes time and I don't feel me reaching a couple thousand probably till next year. Um, so, um, instead of having my money sit in cash, um, like I said, uh, on my net, I was roughly down about 33% on my net when I decided to, you know, take a break from uh, day trading and do more studying on myself and collect more data uh, for the long run of what I'm going to accomplish. So why not look into these SEC filings and dig and do some homework, right? So um, that's pretty much it for today. As you can see, the growth rate of it um, could be exponential and it's awesome. So, you know, that's it.